Today I have Chisco back on the channel and we're talking about Ethelflaed. What is up my friends? My name is Echo and you can see the legend above Chisco. He's back on the channel to talk about the newest legendary commander in the game. He's already shown me some tips and given me some key tips before the video even started, but we're going to start fresh so that you guys could hear just about everything that there is to know about this commander. Chiskul, what's up, brother? Hey, my friend. Thank you for having me again on your channel. Always love collaborating with you and looking forward to talking about this commander. I'm looking forward to it as well, and you're always welcome on my channel, man. It's always a pleasure. For those of you guys that don't know, Chiskul is a Rise of Kingdom exclusive creator himself. He has his own YouTube channel, which is going to be linked down below as well as at the end of the video. So be sure to check out his latest video, and if you like it, give him a subscription. And while you're on the thought of subscribing, go ahead and subscribe to my channel as well, plus hit that bell. But Chiskul, let's talk about Ethel Flad. Tell me... What is she all about? How do you get her? And where did I mess up already? <laughs> so, Ethelflaed is a new peacekeeper into the game. And I love my peacekeepers because I love battling barbarians. Mm -hmm. But she also does some really interesting stuff. So, there's a few things that are really unique about Ethelflaed that we need to talk about. First is the talents that are available to her. Then we're going to talk about her skills, which are really unique. And I think she enables group combat really well. Mm -hmm. And then maybe the last thing we talk about is how you unlock this commander. Because, oh my goodness, there's something we've been waiting for for a long time. It's finally here and Ethelflaed has delivered it. Yes, I like the sound of that. So why don't we start by jumping into the skills, Chisco? All right, cool. So... There's, there's these three trees that we've never seen together before, and mm -hmm. that is leadership, which is generally good for mixed armies and leading rallies. There is peacekeeping, which is all about battling barbarians and getting some amount of value and sustain in the process. Mm -hmm. And then there's support, which is sort of good for open field combat if you go down the full tree. But what I really like is the top part of the tree gets you... Uh, a couple really crucial talents. One is um, going to get you really good movement speed and hasty departure. Mm -hmm. Every time you leave a structure, you go 60% faster. So if you care about open field combat, oh my goodness, that is powerful. Mm -hmm. And the other is rejuvenate, which generates just boatloads and boatloads of rage, right. which is the thing I'm pretty passionate about. Yes, we know. Hey, Chisco, do you have a notepad there with you, brother? Uh, I don't have a notepad with me, but I do have my iPad. Oh, okay. I thought I saw you. Here. I thought I saw you reading notes to yourself. I'm like, it's not. Oh, yeah. It's not that serious on my channel, bro. But, okay. No, I'm, I'm. I'm. You know, <laughs> I gotta have my eyes on the exact skills and the Smart. command details. Smart oh, yeah. man. Well, since I don't have her unlocked, I can't jump in and see that talent tree, sadly. But we can look at the skills individually. Yeah, let's get a crack at those because okay. the very first skill already positions this commander in a really yeah. interesting and unique way and uh basically this skill which is called arrow of iron deals damage in a forward-facing fan-shaped area up to five targets which is pretty cool yep. the damage factor is not very impressive it's only 800 but it reduces their attack defense and health by an upwards of 30 percent if you have the skill maxed now that, that is powerful. Attack, defense, and health, all three, that's crazy. Huge debuff, yeah. huge debuff. And I don't know that there are debuffs that do all three of those things. I don't know how this actually stacks with other debuffs, but it's only a two second window anyways. Um, mm -hmm. So if what you're doing is a big group combat and the thing you were trying to do as a player was support everyone else, Mm -hmm. And you're free to play. The thing you used to do is you'd bring a Joan of Arc. Right. Well, now, if you combine Joan of Arc and Ethelflaed, <laughs> maybe not together, but perhaps two armies, mm -hmm. um, or maybe together, not only could you buff all of your allies, but you could also start to debuff everything that they're hitting, which is super powerful, I think. Wow, yeah, I agree. So, so I think... Oh, sorry, go ahead. So this is this is a, a definite case of where you're going to want to max out this first skill before moving on towards the second. Slam dunk with every legendary commander max out that first skill. Right. But now the other skills, I'm not even sure how I'd recommend you prioritize them. And we should okay. start to talk about those. Let's talk uh, about The them. second skill, Thunderous Force. Mm -hmm. 
um, gives you a counterattack damage taken reduction. So you take less damage mm -hmm. from counterattack. Um, you also cause a pretty significant cavalry march speed reduction, upwards of 50%, and all other types of units, you reduce their march speed by an upwards of 30%. Of your opponent. Um, for your opponent, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and let's see here. Counterattack, when, when actively attacking, so it's whenever your active skill goes off, mm -hmm. you get this bonus. So the second skill is actually augmenting the active skill. It's making it even better. Right. Um, yeah. And I think we've seen that in other commanders before. For instance, Boudica uh, does something similar. Her third skill makes her first skill better. Um, I don't know. Dedicating a whole skill to taking less counterattack damage and like reducing the march speed of an enemy, like, uh, I only find that so exciting, quite frankly. Yeah. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Well, let's so, let's move on over to the third skill and see what that one looks like. How do you feel about synergy? Yep. So synergy is all about battling barbarians, and I love it for mm -hmm. that activity. Thirty-five percent extra experience and bonus damage. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, magnificent. Yeah. Love That's that. Nice. Um, even after you've got your commander's sort of max experience. You still get extra damage, so there's still some value to this skill. I dig it. So now, for someone that is a legendary commander, now, we are going to learn very soon that she's a little bit easier to attain than some other legendary commanders, but how does she stack up to, say, a Lohar, who's pretty easy to max out for attacking barbarians? I mean, she's a legendary. Is it worth the sculptures? I think it's definitely worth the sculptures, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, I... I I tilt my head a little bit about like March speed reduction against a barbarian. Like you don't care about that right. at all. Right. <laughs> so no, it's, like, all. it's like, why would they put that on this commander? But I think if we look a little further, we'll start okay. to see why that is. All right. And a little further is going to take us over to the fortress of Mercia. Yeah. Now this is a weird one and the language here, maybe they've changed it, but it was sort of confusing to me at first. Mm -hmm. So I'll tell you what I think it does. Okay. And I haven't played around with it. Um, and I haven't also, by the way, this commander is relatively new. I haven't actually leveled her up to use that skill because I'm still maxing out the first skill before. Right. Smart man. Up, right? Yeah. You take, you gotta, you take gotta my do tips, that. don't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this skill makes it so that when the commander leads a rally attack, uh -huh. it says all armies joining the rally have a 10% higher troop limit. And when this commander is leading a rally, uh, with at least three different troop types, their damage is increased by 20%, which is pretty sweet. So mm -hmm. if you're leading a rally, presumably against a barbarian fort, mm -hmm. I got to think about whether or not I'd lead a rally with this commander against anything else. But we'll talk about maybe you would in a second. Okay. But if you're leading a rally against it, like a barbarian fort, you get the elevated damage. This is good. I don't know how this first part works. It says all armies joining the rally have a 10% higher troop limit. So does that mean if I was bringing... You know, a hundred thousand. I could bring a hundred ten thousand. Mm. What or, does that mean for people that are bringing their armies and joining you? Well, or does it mean that, or uh, is the rally capacity increased? Mm. So, if I had a rally center with a million, can right. the rally now hold one point one million? Right. Which is what typically rallied army capacity bonus actually means. Uh, and we know that from Mehmed the second. So I'm I'm going to assume it means rally army capacity, which is actually pretty sweet for rallying stuff. Like barbarians are not. There's a possibility that this commander could be really good at rallies. Oh, bring more troops than any other commander can provide. So yeah, it's a, it's a huge buff right there. It is. I mean, you take less damage, you deal more damage. It's very underrated and very powerful. Plus that third skill, or, mm -hmm. or sorry, the 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 three unit type bonus rather right. of 20% extra damage, 20% damage is a lot, yeah. like a lot of damage. <laughs> um, people really lose their mind over how good El Cid is, which people did not originally rate him well, right? Everybody thought, oh, El Cid, he really sucks. And then it turns out he's like the rally master because mm -hmm. when you get below 50% health, he does 25% extra damage and people lose their minds over that. Yeah. This commander doesn't even have to get below that level of health to get 20% extra damage. Pretty Just darn strong. the whole strong. time, yeah. All the time. Strong. And what's that expertise skill looking like? Warrior Queen. New so, yeah, this this is unusual. New it's, skill. Yep. 
It's a passive. You deal 20% extra damage to enemies that are slowed. And one of your skills is focused on slowing your opponent as well. Bingo. That's where it's like, wait a minute. So wow. slowing and like that second skill seems really unimpressive to me, right? Not anymore. Right until you expertise yeah. her, it's like, oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, it uses up the expertise still to accomplish it, but like 20% extra damage, not extra skill damage. Right. Right. Not extra counter attack damage, just 20% damage to all of it. I think that's, that's pretty good. Yeah. 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 I agree. So it's, it's a new skill. It's, I mean, do, that's different how that's laid out from other commanders, correct? Yeah. Some commanders have new skills, most enhance existing skills. Yeah, exactly. I think what's happening here is really interesting. We now have a commander that's offering a debuff that is pretty unique. We haven't seen it elsewhere, mm -hmm. reducing attack, defense, and health by a very meaningful amount. Uh, as much as Joan of Arc actually buffs those things, except she's doing it, Ethelflaed is doing that debuff for all troop types where Joan of Arc is offering one thirty percent buff to one stat for each type of troop you have. Anyways, mm -hmm. I think it's a very powerful debuff, and I wouldn't want to leave home without it if... You're doing, let's say, a rally against a, a big structure or, you know, like any anything really important like that. This could be pretty game changing. Yeah, this seems pretty huge. You may be seeing her a lot on the battlefield, especially against some of those forts. Um, I like it, man, but but I don't have her. Yeah. Good segue. Yeah, exactly. You like that? Let's talk about how you get her. <laughs> Legendary commander. Most of the time, it's like, ah, how am I gonna get that? Especially as a free to play, right? Is, yeah. is this gonna be really expensive? And there's good news and bad news. Okay. What do you want first? I the want bad? the good news first. Give us the good news, man. Okay, the good news. Go to your expedition. Yep. Go to your expedition, and you will see that finally, finally, in the expedition store, they have replaced that uh, universal legendary commander sculpture where they were showing it might cost like 2,500 currency. Mm -hmm. They have replaced it with Ethel Fled, and it's 1,500 currency per. And I didn't know this until I started to get on this call with you. Could have had her unlocked for this video. So what what should people be doing now every single day, Chiskul? Buying all three sculptures of Ethel Fled, and P.S., that's the bad news. It's that's, only three, yeah. and you can't refresh it, and you can't use gems to refresh that either. So you can only get three a day. Now, if you want to... That's not bad, though. Man, that's not bad. Oh, well, how many days does it I know. take I know. to expertise this commander? A lot. We're talking 230-ish days to expertise this commander, which, like... Well, you could still use... You know the heads if you wanted to uh that's the other bad news you no. can't use universal sculptures on this commander you can't oh my gosh you cannot use them so you have to get them here but you can only get three a day so to get the expertise we're like 230 days out still so you need before... to take three quarters of a year to get her maxed yep yep so be... i think we need to now talk about the stages in which you use her, right? The very yeah. first stage is as a debuffer. Mm -hmm. You might bring her for open field combat. Um, the problem with that is that her fourth skill is all about rallies. And in the open field, she's not a part of a rally. Mm -hmm. So that really means you only have two relevant skills for the open field. But if you're hitting five enemies with this debuff, it could just be worth it. It we just don't just, know yet. We don't know yet, right? We don't know. I haven't played with her a whole heck of a lot yet. I've got the first skill at level four, and I've got six sculptures toward having it at level five. So we're still four days away before I can even like get her second skill unlocked and then take her for a spin and see how much I really like that debuff. Yeah. I mean, I guess you could use her now for the 25% debuff, but... Uh, but like you said, the slowing effect at the skill number two, that's not like the biggest deal until you get that that expertise unlocked. Like it's not so exciting. No, it's really not. And, and like quite frankly, um, and I'm going to have a video about this on my channel at some point. Okay. Uh, even in big group combats, like march speed reduction is like fine. But like, I don't know. For the most part, either – they were, the enemy was caught out of position and you're just going to destroy them anyways. Like the mm -hmm. March speed is nice, but they already lost. 
Um, or they're getting away because they have cavalry charge talents and they're super speedy and nobody cares. Like they're just gone. Yeah. So like, I don't know how much the March speed reduction really matters. Um, yeah. but, but like my goodness <laughs> with expertise skill. And this is the sort of third stage with Ethel flight is when you get that expertise skill. Now, every other commander that you have that does a March speed reduction is increasing Ethel flood's damage. Mm. And that's, so when you use your Sao Tau and it does the 10% march speed reduction, it doesn't matter that it's only a 10% march speed reduction. Boom, you've just activated Ethel Fled's 20% damage boost, right? right. Like every time. I, yeah. I think it could be really sweet for group combat. Um, I think it'd be really sweet. Like Joan of Arc and Ethel Fled now for the free to play player become very, very available mm -hmm. and very, very helpful and powerful. Yeah, and that's true though. I mean, it takes time. But free-to-play players, they're in this to grind anyway, because that's what this game is about. So they could grind a legendary commander that really, as we're seeing it right here, has a ton of potential. Now we have to I see think... if the potential plays out. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. It's an awesome thing to work toward. Mm -hmm. um, and would it help for a second to talk about how you prioritize your currency in the expedition shop? I believe it shall. Yeah, let's go back there on the screen. Cool. Talk about it. So... Um, when I'm spending currency in the expedition shop, mm -hmm. my number one priority now would be Ethel Flood. Mm -hmm. That's where it all goes. Cause like you're time bound on that and everybody should want to have her. And if you aren't working on a lot of other legendary commanders, you probably are going to want to level her up eventually yeah. to be max level uh, because the support tree is just so good. It's just so much rage generation and Hasty Departure is just so excellent for open field combat that you're going to want to be a primary, and that means the thing you should focus your currency on next, after maxing out the amount you can purchase Ethel Flood, is probably on Legendary Stars. Mm -hmm. That's where I spend them, on Legendary Stars, and for a long, long time, right? Like, you and I have been playing this game for a long time, Echo. Yeah, since the beginning. I mean, like, I've been getting Epic Stars, too, and now, like, I've got a lot of my epic commanders already at six stars so i like mm -hmm. don't really need those stars anymore but if you're a beginning player oh man pick up every one of those epic stars every one of those legendary stars you don't want to be stuck without them when it's time to do your upgrades right no oh, i'm now at a bottleneck on legendary stars and there were times in the past where i was like i don't really need those do yeah, i of course uh, i need yeah. every single one yeah. <laughs> um, from there, you might work on some other epic commanders, but eventually you're going to get plenty of epic commander sculptures, right. right? You're right. Like you and I are at a point. I mean, you know, I, I hit this point recently ish where I actually had enough epic sculptures floating around that I can expertise every single epic commander. Oh. And like, you'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> By the, in fact, in the amount of time it takes. <laughs> To get Ethel Fled maxed out, you will have enough epic sculptures to max every epic commander currently in the game at the time that we're filming this video anyways. Right. Well, I like that Rise of Kingdoms gave the opportunity for free-to-play players to have a legendary commander like Ethel Fled along with the pay-to-play players. It's, it's just nice that the option is there. Um, I think they did that well this time around, and it would be nice if we could just use those, you know, those universal sculptures if we wanted to, but they hold us back from that. So that's a little bit more of an even playing field with her, which is kind of cool. I have to tell you, I, I kind of like that, and I think it adds a little bit of balance there for free-to-play and, uh, and pay-to-play, just for that one commander, at least. Yeah, you know, it gives us something to grind, at, yep. which is good, um, and in some ways it actually protects us from using those precious yes. universal sculptures on a commander that like you actually could get a different way and you really should when you can get a commander a different way and you know if it's on plan for you go that route instead of any other way the example i'll give for me is that um, i'm buying the daily special offers that mm -hmm. offer uh sculptures of legendary commanders and for me that's El Cid sculptures that show up there. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not putting any universals on El Cid right. because I can buy my way to him. And that's on plan for me. I know that's not on plan for everybody. Right. Um, but, you know, with Ethel Fled, it's on plan for everybody. And the designers said, we're going to make it on plan for everybody. To not use their universals, you got to go and do it every day and make your commitment. 
Hey, it's another reason to log in every single day, though, right? Amen. Amen. Any last tips you want to talk about, Ethel Flat, or anything else before we sign to close things up for today, brother? Um, you know, the last tip I'll offer is that because she's a commander, that elevates experience gain. I would just be very careful about putting a lot of experience tomes onto her. All of my peacekeepers now are level 60, and I still use peacekeepers as a primary when I'm battling barbarians for that AP reduction. Um, but all the experience I gain when I'm out battling stuff all my peacekeepers is wasted because they're already level 60. You can't go beyond 60. So um, I would just be careful about putting a lot of experience gems into Ethel Flood. I would not do that because eventually you'll level her up uh, because you should be using her for battling barbarians as a primary commander for those peacekeeping talents. Good point. Good point. Jessica, why don't you tell everyone, give them a little bit of a teaser of what some of your upcoming videos are going to be for. Make them want to just run on over to your channel <laughs> right after watching this. Yeah, we, we've got spending videos where we max purchase stuff. We've got KVK videos where, I mean, like, over the course of uh, four days, we lost over a million troops and we're still rolling out oh, slowly. Man. Oh, oh my man. gosh. KVK was just brutal. completely brutal. Totally <laughs> nuts. Yeah, no, the first two days I lost 800,000 troops. And in my recent video, I, I had a little achievement show up that was like, you've had over a million troops die. And I was like... Ooh, oh, what's a million troops to you, though, Chiskel? To you, that's like uh, nothing in the bucket. <laughs> I don't know. I'm back up to 2.7, 2.8 million now, so I guess I'm doing okay again. Well, good for you, man. So what I want you guys to do is head on over to Chiskel's channel. Again, if you can't find it, you'll find it in the description or at the very end of this video. And, uh, well, Chiskel, thank you for coming down, man. I always love having you on the channel, brother. Hey, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. No problem, man. And guys, if you enjoyed the video, throw a thumbs up on it. Don't forget to subscribe to both channels, and we will see here, we will see you here another day with another video. Until then.